So I'm so excited to be here talking to Annabelle because she's such an inspiration to us. We love your show. Thank you very much. And we love your cookbook. You're going to show it. Oh, which, uh, Kate has actually handed this to me. <laughs> I don't actually walk around with it just going. This is my copy that Annabelle is going to sign yes, for me I to will. add to my collection. <laughs> so Annabelle, what I would really love to know is I'd like to know a lot about you and your childhood and what led you to your fascinating career. Uh, well, I grew up in country South Australia on a farm. I read a lot when I was a kid because, mm. you know, it's reasonably isolated. Um, my family never throws anything out, so I had lots of books that mm. had belonged to my grandparents and um, so I chewed my way through a lot of mm. quite, some quite random books really. <laughs> um, I also used to, be going, I used to be obsessed with going to um, country fairs and buying stacks this high of Reader's Digest. Mm. I was completely obsessed with reading that magazine, it was very weird. <laughs> uh, my mum is a great cook and most of my great memories of childhood are being in the kitchen with her, so um, I wasn't a completely mad cook in my teenage years I reckon but probably in my late 20s I started really really getting into mm. it and um, and when I had children is when I started really going into overdrive and be, that's when I sort of started baking. Oh, I guess. It's because you've got to cook every day don't you and yeah. so if you're not going to drive yourself mad with boredom <laughs> you, you want to try different things. You do and I actually find cooking really relaxing as well. Like so I, do I. I don't do yoga because I mm. always get anxious about how much time I'm Sorry, yoga people, wasting! I just, I can't sit there and meditate because I just think mm -hmm. I could have done... I could have done 10 time. things by now. Yeah, yeah I'm the but same. I, I get the same, I think, you know, um, relaxation out of cooking mm. uh, than others would from being cross-legged. Mm. So that's good. So what is your favourite dish to cook? Uh, or one if, of your favourites? Okay, so if I'm... I often spend a lot of time thinking about, you know, what I would cook if I was just cooking for me, because I never am just cooking for mm. me. And the problem is that if I am ever in the house by myself, I get complete options paralysis, and mm. then I end up having cheese and crackers. Like it's just peanut butter toast. But I think if I, um, my incredibly quick favourite meal is to cook up some pasta, usually just um, uh, something, a sort of a macaroni type pasta. Mm -hmm. And um, when the pasta is nearly done, throw in some frozen peas and then drain it all mm -hmm. and then squeeze of lemon, olive oil, lots and lots of cracked pepper and shredded mint and crumbled feta. That, that is, is one of my favourite dishes. Yeah. I absolutely it's love not, that combination. Yeah, so easy. Yeah, very so fresh. Delicious. And so mm. I could just eat that till the cows come home I think. All right so what is your worst ever cooking disaster? Okay I cooked a dessert for Helen Garner once. Oh really? And it was a disaster oh. and it's because I was in, living in London and my friend was friends with Helen Garner and he just had, he just mentioned one day oh you know oh you know the writer Helen Garner she's coming around for dinner I'm like invite me to your house too please which he did because <laughs> he's nice. Yeah. I said I'll bring dessert. But it was early in my dessert career, and I think I was so overwhelmed at the thought of making mm. something Bell and Gunner that I kind of made, I made this, I went off the plantation, really, and I made uh, this tart, but it wasn't really a tart, it was kind of a cheesecake, but it kind of had a crust, and it was sort of baked, it collapsed, it, it was not nice, and I was terribly embarrassed. But anyway, I did raise this with Helen, um, recently and she said she had no recollection at all of the dish so that's oh, nice. Isn't it? So at mm. least it wasn't a bad memory. No. <laughs> no memory no. is better than she was a bad memory. Charming, of, course. of course she was. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. And so you of course have uh, amazing cookbooks with your name on them. But what yeah. cook what's your Thanks. favourite cookbook? What uh, I I go through fads with cookbooks mm. and um, uh, anything by Hetty McKinnon, I just absolutely am all over like a rash. She's mm -hmm. got a new one coming out very soon, which I'm uh, beside myself with excitement about. Um, Ottolenghi, of course, you know, I've got every single cookbook that mm. he's ever published. Um, and the one that I've really been cooking out of lately, um, I got it for Christmas last year, and it's it's a, a bewitching cookbook, is Mark Best's cookbook called Best Kitchen Basics. And some of the recipes are not basic at all, mm. um, but they're just, I don't know, it's beautifully written, it's funny, it's irreverent, it's totally random, like, you know, there'll be... The, the recipe that I've been really experimenting with is kingfish ham. Making ham out of kingfish, it takes oh about five gosh. weeks. And I love a long recipe, <laughs> so, you know, where you've got a real sense of mm. achievement at the end. Oh my gosh, he's also got a recipe for 47 egg yolk tagliatelle, which... 47 um, yeah, egg yolks. There's something I mean, that, so great about that, yeah. like not 48, which would be obvious. Yes. Mm. It's 47. Mm. Anyway, it's great pasta and oh, it will give you an immediate 
heart attack, of course, because... And I have to say, I love the word bewitching. It's one of my own personal favourite words. Right. So any cookbook that has been called bewitching, I'm going to have to get. Get on it. Yeah, you, will not re- you will not regret it. Now, my very final question for mm. you today is, I know that you love to read and mm. that you read a lot. Mm-hmm. What are the best books that you've read recently? Well, I've been on a bit of a Sydney Writers' Fest um, mm. hammering kind of process. So um, I just finished The Trauma Cleaner by Sarah Krasnostein. I bought it today. It is astounding. Is it's it? such, it's an unusual book, but it tells you the story of a person mm. and also the story of what happens to people when things go oh. wrong mm. with a shadow of, of redemption. And the thing I love about it too is that the author is present but mysteriously so throughout you mm. find out little scraps about her life as well i just mm. i loved it i really oh, thought it was an awesome book. i'm looking forward to it yeah very yeah. much well mm. um again you won't regret that purchase at all thank you so much and thank you for coming and being on word of mouth tv with us we're very pleased to have you thank it's you it's a pleasure <laughs> nice to see you thanks